Hey, welcome back to the show. Many thanks for your time. Like I said, right now we're going to talk a lot more politics. Well, barely two weeks ago, the NDC successfully went through their primaries. They elected their parliamentary candidates to represent them in the 2020 general elections. So even though it was largely successful, as said, there were some serious concerns. Some have been quite unhappy about what they called imposition of some candidates on them. Some say there has been monetization in the system. There have been accusations as well of vote buying specifically, and uh, the people have expressed diverse views on that particular matter. So how far have those investigations gone? Because we were told that the NDC is going to investigate those matters. This afternoon, the General Secretary of the NDC, Johnson Asiedun Ketia, is my special guest here on The Pulse. Well, mind you, he recently graduated with a master's degree in defense and international affairs at the Kofi Annan Peacekeeping Training Center. So he comes at a very good time when we're talking about violent extremism. You can join the conversation by sharing your thoughts with us on social media, all our social media platforms, like I indicated. Uh, drop us a WhatsApp on 050 564 6330. That's 050 564 six three three zero our facebook page facebook.com forward slash join news on tv is also a place where you where you can leave your comments you have any questions have any thoughts that you want uh, general secretary to address let it flow and join the conversation mr sayden here. you're welcome to the show thank you my sister and congratulations on your um uh, master's in degree and defense deg uh, your master's in defense and international affairs International um, politics. It, 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 hold on. Defense and international politics. politics. Yes. Okay. MDIP. Defense. <laughs> MDIP. Yes. yes. I remember. <laughs> I, I partook briefly in that course for two uh, weeks. Okay. Uh, conflict, <laughs> conflict management. Conflict management. Yes. Okay. Conflict okay. management. I didn't okay. see you there. Oh, I don't know when you went there. <laughs> <laughs> well, what, that was when they were doing the conflict management and um, uh, uh, crisis. I, I did the conflict uh, management course last year. Let oh, right. Year. So, okay. Yeah. Well, congratulations. This okay. afternoon, the big conversation, as you heard the president talk about the wife of Mr. Kofi Annan, former UN Secretary General, and other African leaders, former African leaders, they've all been talking about how exposed our young people especially are to radical um, thoughts. Extremism. Yes, and radical ideologies. Uh, I'm, I'm interested to take your thoughts on that before we go on. Well, it's a real threat. Uh, I mean, violent extremism um, is, is, is virtually engulfing Africa. Mm. And it must be a source of worry for us, particularly uh, those of us in sub-Saharan Africa. Um, mm. It has a lot to do with uh, the blowing up of Libya mm. and, uh, you know, and the fact that uh, the Libyan state had accumulated a lot of uh, arms. arms. And uh, after the collapse of Libya, no conscious effort was made to make sure that the arms are properly uh, protected. Mm. So they've since infiltrated into the Sahelian region. And that's how come it is very easy to get small arms in any country in the Sahelian region. So those are there. And then coupled with the problem of un youth unemployment, mm. In the in, in the sub region, uh, it is said that the devil finds work for idle hands. So you have youth who are unemployed and idle, and then the third factor is also the uh, the inflow of uh, psychotropic substances. Mm. You know, Ghana has, is gradually becoming a, a, a bulk breaking point for. Uh, cocaine and other substances mm. from, mm. Uh, sub, uh, I mean, Latin America for transhipment into Europe and other places. So where you have um, youth unemployment, you have access to small arms, and also you have psychotropic substances. The tramadol the mm. uh, implosion has also added to the, to, the, to the problem. So when you have all this coming together, and the fact that uh, um, political activists have decided to train people in how to handle arms and so on. So mm. the concoction of all these things makes Ghana 
uh, exposed to violent extremism. Mm. And uh, to add to that, uh, every such activity has to be funded. And then you have a problem of uh, money laundering also yeah. within the sub-region. Yeah. So all the factors that can come together mm. to create problems this for This us looks like a very dangerous concoction. Yes. A uh, very, very dangerous co concoction that we're dealing with. And they've been trying to find out ways that we can deal with it. One of the things they're proposing is to focus more on the young people and focus on providing social um, amenities, things that make people feel well off, they live okay. And that, that will some way somehow reduce, if not eliminate, their susceptibility to extremist ideas. What do you make of that? Yeah, yeah that is a good step. But we still think that um, conferences like what is taking place mm -hmm. ought to be <coughs> intensified. We had proposed in the past the need for a national dialogue that mm -hmm. will bring together law enforcement agencies, uh, you know, political parties and all other stakeholders to look at the problem as a, a national problem so that we can, we can think through, brainstorm and to find uh, some road map as to how to uh, prevent uh, you know, that problem in the bad. Unfortunately, it hasn't happened. And, uh, okay. We can only hope that one day it will happen. Well, it is exciting news that people like you are the thick uh, in the thick of affairs when it comes to politics, have taken courses in defense and um, some of these security courses. So hopefully you'll be able to advise some of your friends because largely linked to all of these issues is politics. We know that for sure, isn't it? So hopefully you'll be... Is that what, is that what um, motivated there you is, to take the is, course? There is one thing. Of course, uh, violent extremism has become uh, you know, a problem for the international community. And so anybody who is a player in international politics mm -hmm. ought to be interested in uh, seeking more knowledge about the causes and uh, ways of uh, dealing with it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I happen to be a vice president of Socialist International. And so mm -hmm. we are uh, confronted with these issues which we discuss at every meeting, the problem of uh, violent extremism, the problem of human security. Mm -hmm that finds expression in the uh, movement of people from countries across borders and so on. So these are issues, climate change and envir environmental degradation and so on, which are all matters of uh, human security. security. They keep coming up and they keep being discussed at our various uh, conferences. So uh, as a vice president of such an organization, you need to have more knowledge mm. in those areas. Enough so motivation for you to have taken. Motivated. You wanted to say that there was one thing you wanted to add before we move on. I was down saying to there was one. Th there is one thing giving advice, and another thing, uh, <laughs> the advice being taken. We, I haven't ceased to give this advice, but unfortunately, those who are the movers and shakers. Are, are not, uh, you know, enthused with that advice. I'm talking about the President of the Republic. I've spoken about this at the, our meetings with the Peace Council. I have said that, look, this is a bigger problem than can be addressed by just a meeting of two political parties. So mm -hmm. let us bring all stakeholders on board and treat the problem as an emerging problem. Are you talking about the party militias? They are part of it. They are okay. part of it. You have uh, uh, militias in the in the in the in the land sector. You have land guards and other things. All these constitute the building blocks for this uh, violent extremism. And we ought to be able to sit together as a nation, mm. uh, devoid of our all political considerations, and look at what can be done. Mm. Because, uh, Hopefully so. If I should yeah. ask you finally before again I move on, um, your thoughts about your assessment of general the general security situation in the country, what what what, what would your thoughts I be? I think it is bad. The Why? general security situation in the country is bad. Because see, in a democracy we <coughs> we give monopoly of violence to uh, the state. And so the state is the only institution that is empowered to apply violence when violence is needed. 
And so if violence is needed by the, um, the security agencies to protect us from international aggression or internal peace, mm. they have the right to do it. But where you find out that state agencies like the police, the military, and the other security services come under attack by civilians, then the nation is not safe. Because our sa safety is in the hands of these people, and so they must be protected, and they must feel protected enough to be able to protect the rest of us. So if you have uh, some level of impunity where policemen are attacked and killed, where military men are attacked and killed and nothing happens, then you know that we are on a slippery slope. And you heard me when I, I, I spoke very vehemently about uh, Major Mohammed's uh, lynching. Mm. I did indicate that if nothing is done to find that solution, to set uh, an example of those who are engaged in that lynching, mm -hmm. it, will, it will be like, uh, well, you can attack the army, uh, 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 you can attack the police, you can attack anybody and, and get away with it. You, but so, we saw so those people put it. on trial. So, and uh, so yeah. far we haven't seen any resolution and it doesn't appear to me from my point of view, it doesn't appear that uh, the nation is serious about uh, uh, finding solution to that problem. Mm. And what? so if those problems are not resolved, they can only grow bigger and bigger. If you talk about in the, in the last month, in the, in the month of August alone, about five yeah. police officers sure. were killed. But immediately, for example, the, for what happened in the northern region, immediately it happened the next day, the suspects were arrested. Mm -hmm. In the case of the two officers who were killed in Budumburam, immediately it happened the next day. I mean, just about a few hours, let's say 24, 48 hours, the, the prime suspect was arrested. Others, in fact, seven people have been arrested. So certainly something has been done about it's it. Saying that so far, nobody has been convicted for murder. From <coughs> high profile cases like uh, Rana's murder with 40 other people, followed by other incidents, and so on and so on. So it is only where you, you, you see that uh, the, uh, maybe the, the police, in the case of Ninja, and Tola also. Mm -hmm. It happened sometime in the 90, past. Somewhere 1998. They, they moved swiftly mm -hmm. and were able to find a solution to that problem. But if you have a series of high profile murders and we don't appear to have any uh, conclusion out of those prosecutions, that it should be worrisome to the country, and it will not serve as a deterrent to anybody who intends to do something uh, nasty. But again, like we that. subject ourselves to democratic processes. I mean, these are governance processes, that, uh, legal processes that have to be followed. That is to why the, to we the have to sit together to find out that is the legal processes that are in place, are they serving the interests of the nation? It is not a one-man issue. That's why we have to sit together and find out how come we are not able to deal with these things the way other countries are able to deal with them? Is it the problem with our uh, uh, criminal prosecution system? Is it the way, uh, is it about interference in the work of the police? Is this about what? Whatever it is, it is incumbent upon us as citizens of the nation who are interested in the, the, the peace and security of this nation to confront that issue because we cannot be there and then how many chiefs have not been murdered without any resolution including the chief of my own hometown just shot like that nothing has happened yana has been killed you have cases of chiefs killed in ashanti recently you have uh, uh, you know policemen killed you have uh, uh, soldiers lynched and so on. You have national security operatives attacked and so on. So we must see it as a problem in the country. But sitting down, to, to even to, to get to you, pro you the major political parties to sit down and deal with this issue that came up as a crucial one as disbanding party militias, even to get you parties to sit down and deal with it, we haven't been successful. How are you going it to get to that, that's down to what deal I with said. This? It's a wrong approach. You see, if there is a problem and you want to solve it, there is one way of appearing 
to be solving is when you are not committed at finding a solution. So it means that the political yes, parties are, you are not are, committed. Listen, listen, listen. Criminal prosecution is the exclusive preserve of a government. Nobody else. So if the government is interested in solving crime, they will find solution. If the government is not interested in solving crime, it will be difficult for any other person to meet anywhere and try to get solution. Are you saying that because this government is not interested in solving crime? The constitution gives criminal prosecution to the uh, attorney general and not nobody else. So if you uh, renege on your duty, and you try to involve other people to create the impression that, well, it is MPP, NDC, you are not, you are not, <laughs> you are not ready to solve the problem. Because, my sister, what happened in Ayawaso West Wogo? It didn't need a meeting of two political parties to find solution. What was needed? Because there were about 18 crimes committed. In broad daylight, everybody saw them. They, they were captured on, uh, uh, you know, on television, on the, videos. Isn't and that so in on. the bosom of a competent court of jurisdiction to pronounce? Who does that? It is the duty of the state prosecutorial system to present them to court. It, the, the court doesn't sit somewhere and say that we have heard something happen in Ayawasu, so we are pronouncing. And so far, nobody has been apprehended. Nobody has been presented to any court. So where do you go to blame that one on the police or another political party or the, 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 the court? So you make a point that a government, that uh, a, a, the, 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 that sole responsibility of prosecuting some of pe people for some of these crimes lies with the, with the government. Are you then saying that this government has not shown interest or seriousness about dealing with crime because it says it is? Precisely. It is not? It is not. Because I have, I have cited these 18 cases happening in one day in Iowa so West. And not a single one of them has been presented to any court for anything. There was a so commission why would set you, up. There was I'm, a commission set up to the matter. We didn't need the commission. We didn't need any commission before those crimes are prosecuted. If I, if, if I came here with a gun and I shot at you, does the government need a commission to investigate what happens in Joy FM before I'm arrested? But what happened at Ayawaso West Wagon was much more <laughs> complex. No, it say? isn't complex. This is crime. What is the difference between slapping somebody in the street and slapping yeah. that same person near a polling station? The, individual, the, the individuals <laughs> involved in that could it also take the It doesn't change the color of the crime. Okay, a so crime, the bottom line, the, the bottom point line is that a crime is a crime. If you shoot at somebody, it is a criminal matter which must be dealt with. You don't need a commission to sit to be able to determine whether you should prosecute or you shouldn't prosecute. And again, and you because say because there was there is no political will to uh, uh, prosecute criminals. Mm -hmm. That is why crime continues to rise. Okay. So that is the bottom line. If we are prepared as the state to prosecute criminals, criminals will know that whatever they do, they will be subject to prosecution, and they will be careful if they plan to do anything. But so long as criminals can get away with impunity, then they can only be encouraged to move forward with their acts. So for you, what will be the, the, the solution the, I mean, the, 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 the solution from your perspective, what will work? Okay. Because you're saying that people, two of the, the political parties meeting will not solve the problem. No, no, no. The no, commission no. that was set up to deal with it, you said, was why, not the solution. Why, why would it solve so, the problem? But that's just one of the problems okay, so when what it comes has, to security. What has happened to the commission? So, the commission has no, finished its way. Has the problem been solved? So the problem at Ayahuasca <laughs> West Wagon is just one of the security problems yes, that we yes, had. Yes. But generally, you're saying that we can't, we, sitting down, to, to, to talk about the problem won't bring us a solution. What will? I am saying that, I'm not saying sitting down to talk about it. There is a, an aspect of the problem that needs the meeting of minds. But there are others that need action. Because you don't need to sit down to discuss whether somebody slapping another person is a crime because all the laws are there. Are provided for so, the so you okay. have to, those who have to act must act. If they are not acting, we must be interested in finding out why they are not acting. Look. There, are, there, there is a way that criminals can be set free even 
when we, we appear that we are, we, are, we are dealing with crime. If there's a crime here, and we all know that you are the one who perpetrated the crime, and you are left, and then I get arrested. And then the news is that Asidu Nkete has been arrested for committing this crime and so on and so on. You pursue the matter. When you go to court, I'll be set free. So it begins with the arrest. So you can pinpoint a wrong person. If you want to protect me, you can pinpoint a wrong person, cause his arrest, and then you go through the process three years, four years, you'll be set free. At that time, you cannot now go looking for another person. So there are so it all boils down to the political will and the sincerity, you know, the motivation for people to deal with crime. If we are motivated enough to deal with crime, I can tell you our security services are some of the best on the African continent. But they say that one of and the key but problems... the motivation the, and, is not and, there. And then one of the key problems is you, the politicians, and the level of which you inter at which you interfere it with the work of the security we, services. The politicians. Criminal prosecution is the duty of government. So if you are talking about politicians, they must be politicians in government and not any other politicians. 